cue dramatic music. Joshua 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am given to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to another Good With It podcast. We got a good one coming for you. We got the fellas, as always, never, always steady, never unfaithful. You got Mitch, Jarrett, Cole, myself, AB, and we got a good one coming for you. We got some good stuff coming at you. We got our top four uh, Pop-Tart selection. Stay tuned for that one. That's going to be a good one. Got a really, in my opinion, hot topic, Good With It segment. For some of you out there. And of course, ending with Nehemiah 12. Fellas, how the heck are we doing? I need two things. I need a helmet. And I need a brick wall to run through after hearing that, my man. <laughs> Let's do this thing. I'm fired up. Brother. I got a belly brother. full of breakfast I had for dinner. Yes, I'm sir. happy. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> What'd you have? This is one of the best weeks of the year. It really is. Oh, why? I wonder why. Jared, why might that be? Well, boys, down in our parts, this week, this weekend, finally opens up duck season. And we are getting after it. I was about to go get my duck call and blow it, but I figured it was like break the mic. (laughs) So I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it would probably bust my eardrums. So appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> My surprised. dog would probably be bark too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. AB, I had some pancakes, a little uh, over easy egg on a biscuit, and some bacon. Ooh. To answer your question, nice. that biscuit hey, sop you- up them juices. Ooh, mm. you dang right. Ooh. You know, you know, this is a. I don't know why, and Cole, I'll let you get to you how you're feeling in just a minute uh, because I am curious. Uh, but whenever I think of Mitch's house, for whatever reason, I remember staying a whole week at Mitch's house when my parents went on a vacation. And, um, I guess we, he drove me, they, you know, they drove me to school. I remember eating, uh, Lego or Ego, my, whatever it is, Ego waffles. Lego, my Ego. Lego, those my used, Ego waffles. Yeah, yeah, those used to they be were so stinking good. I don't know what it was, but I, I've never had those waffles as good as I did at Mitch's. And I always think about that. Steven oh. Staple, huh? Hey, so good. Cool. <laughs> I went on a little phase in college for like a month and a half where Eggos were part of the main diet. And I remember just how good they were. For like It was only like a month and a half. And then after that, I said, RIP Eggos, it's time to move on. But they, they are really good. You toast one, get a little crunchy, get a little, uh, I put that over a regular waffle any day in Eggo. Hey, wow. amen. I, re- I mean, that is, that mm-hmm. is not even a hot take. That's a good take. <laughs> hey, yeah, I appreciate the full coming around that you've done on my food takes you've gone from ripping me a new one from a few weeks ago to just not even hearing me as a person not even just talking looking at me as a person not even acknowledging you wow wow this is this is we've come a long ways and i'm proud of it it's called maturity that's what it's called it's you know it's just i'm blossoming into full maturity as we speak actually fun fact my mother-in-law told me this week that i get smarter every time that i hang out with him and I believe it. <laughs> what What does that mean? Does that mean like they're so smart that it's rubbing off on you every time or like every time you see them like, oh, ab has gotten smarter. I'm going to go so, with both. Okay. Is that like a subtle j- jab? Yeah, it's, it's like the a bishop family. Like, look, your family is not as cool as mine, but I'm culturing you and taking you in and really showing you the Barnett way. And, well, let me just um, say, I will say, I think we could, and my family would agree, me marrying Rachel has definitely upped our IQ points. Like our ACT average <laughs> was like here, and Rachel raised raised it about two or three points. I mean, yeah. she really helped us. She really helped us out. So mm. um, huge for the program. Just, it really big, was. Big it was. Program. Mm. Well, 
Good to know, man. So Jared alluded, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm asking how y'all's weekend was. I think we all know where we want to start this with. Um, Jared alluded to something that's coming up this weekend. Um, and what, what did we do Friday afternoon, fellas? Well, the three of us, um, <laughs> Cole, <laughs> Jared and Cole. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Baby. It, it had to be said at some point. Oh, that's totally fine. Don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> no, we went out. We, uh, we went to one of the honey holes and, uh, it needed some, a little bit of work. And so we got out there like men with some chainsaws and, uh, went to work and, you know, I feel like Mitch and, and Cole carried their, their weight. Uh, above and beyond they uh cole cole had a a vision and uh we we made it happen built a, a pretty sweet little spot there so I'm, I'm can excited. i just say I'm can i say it. as we as we go in it was a really good day and you know i just enjoyed hanging out with you fellas um but i've been given an, an innate ability and actually that's what i got my degree in is business management um so i know how to you know manage the situation around me and my innate ability is to, uh, for whatever reason, be on the, I call myself a behind the curtain worker is mm. what I really am. Mm. Um, as everybody's out taking the credit, you know, sawing, you know, you know, cutting down the trees, cutting down the limbs, sweating really hard. I'm over there behind the camera, really working, working so that our name can get out, you know, uh, managing the situation, managing the emotions. Uh, that's, that's kind of my, I, I pride myself in that gift. And, you know, I thought I did it well. Without me, I don't know what we could have done, honestly, on Friday. You know, AB numerous times told us, hey, guys, I think that log needs to go. I think that limb needs to go here. And and I'm proud of him for that. And I also, I got to give him credit. He's, without a doubt, I'll bring it back up. He's the smartest man in the room every time. I mean, he strategically left his waiters in the truck. <laughs> if he even brought them. <laughs> the only and, one. Wore his rubber boots. Oh, it's getting too deep, boys. I gotta stay right here. <laughs> stay right here. So you're smart. I give you that. I you know, that. I will say that when it comes with like with the good with it side of things, AB does come in clutch because I I think the three of us would have just gone in there, done our business, and gotten out, and we wouldn't gotten any footage. AB's always thinking about the good with it, faithful, and people out there. And he's always trying to get us some good content. So I do appreciate that. It that. is funny, though. Hey, the thank you. three seconds he ran a chainsaw, we captured five of those <laughs> seconds on camera. So. Hey, you know, I got to let him know that I'm working. I got to let him know that I'm working. <laughs> now, let me say this. I'll say this. Not on the, not on the Instagram. Okay, you got to go to the YouTube to see my full five. My, my really cool, it's two and a half seconds. I got to get 15 <laughs> seconds in there. Okay. On the Instagram video, all you hear is my voice. So I'm not in that one. Hey, I'm, sure I'm, showing, like I'm showing you who the showing you who the true MVPs are. Mm. Yeah, I have a go little like and, go like and subscribe. Can y'all see that? I have a little mm. I have yeah. little battle scars because I had a nice I had a tie in with some poison ivy, I guess, while we we're out there doing that. And mm. I'm feeling it, itching like crazy. Uh but hey, it's for the ducks. It's for the content. Right, son. Dad gummit and we put some work in. I, I I've never had the combination of sawdust, chainsaw, and waiters. Um, it was interesting. I felt like a man. Um, I don't think my waiters made it through this weekend. I'll just be honest. I'm waiting Saturday morning to find some water in one of them. Yeah, um, I went a little too hard. Let me just say this too. Mm. Did Did anybody else step outside this weekend? And it's like, ooh, it's feeling mm -hmm. that, that wind officially had some nip to it. It, listen, boys, I woke up on Sunday morning in North Georgia to 32 degrees. Ooh. Wow. You know what that means? Pushing the them ducks, ducks south. Coming. Oh, yeah. The ducks yeah, are coming. I, I looked at uh, the Ducks Unlimited Migration Report and everything in North and like middle Georgia and middle Alabama was saying increasing numbers. So Nice. Also, fun fact, in an eight-hour flight, how many miles do you think a mallard can cover? This is a fun Ooh. fact. Um, can we just, how about, uh, well, no, that wouldn't be fun. Eight hours. Eight, I'm going to say eight hours. And 165 miles. 
They travel 15 miles an hour, so I'm going to say... Let me let me just think here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go upward of around 250. 120 miles. Huh? What? What'd you say, Cole? 120. 120. Um, amazing waterfowl facts from Ducks Unlimited. 800 miles. Yeah, that's a that's 100 miles an hour. <laughs> this is what this is. This is this is what, okay. Listen. Uh, there's gonna, y'all are going to be like, oh, well, duh, why don't you say, okay. Most waterfowl fly at speeds of 40 to 60 miles an hour, with many species averaging roughly 50 miles an hour. So with a 50-mile-an-hour tailwind, migrating mallards are capable of traveling 800 miles during an eight-hour flight. Oh, and well, duh. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fun it's fact, It's still though. cool, like, though. That's crazy. I mean, 800 miles? They're, they're that's flying in a, in a hurricane that's constantly pushing them the right yeah, the whole time. Hey, <laughs> hey, listen, and if you fit all that low pressure's coming this way, so hey, yeah. just saying, yeah. it's a northeastern wind, which is what it's going to be Saturday morning while we shoot redheads on mm-hmm. the coast. I'm hoping to get some good content. Yeah, that's going to be good. We're not telling you where we're going, though, because we don't want you to show up, you little <laughs> stinkers out there. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah, we hey, might I need- also have a I also have a fun fact. Um, this is very random though, but I thought it was very fun, and I believe that Mitch and Jarrett for sure is going to in- to appreciate this fun fact. Uh, Cole, about, I do think you'll is it about music. It. Uh, yes, how'd you guess? <laughs> um, <laughs> random fact small. of the day. Did you know? Fun fact. Did you know that your heartbeat changes depending on the music you are listening to? <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Like if I listen to that scores playlist, I guarantee it gets up in the hundred beats per minute range. Son, I'm 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 about rocking one twenty. Dang right. My one armpit that sweats for because whatever reason my <laughs> other one doesn't doesn't sweat, but that one is pouring sweat because I'm so jacked up. You might need to get that checked out, bud. That's interesting. Eh. My back's like messed that, up. Um, it's fine. It's like when that countdown clock starts in CrossFit. There's nothing yeah. that'll jack your heart rate like that. No oh, man. Ooh. You know what we're talking about, Cole? Mm-hmm. Every Cole time. We're talking about. Every right time. Before, right before that Fran workout that you had to do, as soon as that. Right before my back gives in every time I do a CrossFit workout. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't yeah. feel my toes. I'm a CrossFit advocate <laughs> now because my back is reminded every morning of a CrossFit workout I did over a month ago. Mm. If, um, we, if we make a athletic like workout apparel, that's going on a shirt. I can't feel my toes. <laughs> that is one hundred percent going on a shirt yeah. across the chest. Just I can't, I can't feel, feel my toes. toes. <laughs> and then underneath it, hashtag if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, trying to gain girth. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh boys, I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna brag on Cole again. Um, Cole, you're awesome. And I'm just getting because I know last time I said, Jarrett, you can have Cole back. I don't mm. like Cole anymore, basically. What? Is what I, did. I just yeah. slapped Cole in the face in the last the tables pod. have turned, have turned. Cole, it's just, it's just like a rotating door, man. You know how it is. I mean, we get around each other. We all chum it up. We all yuck it up with each other. But when we're like with one or the other guys, it's just harmony. I mean, it's mm. what it is. Um, so I spent most of the day Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon with Cole. But let me tell you boys something. This man knows how to make a shepherd's pie. Are y'all wow. shepherd's pie guys? Um, yep. I'm yep. not a big shepherd's pie guy, but I would try Coles. Let me tell you, he made shepherd's pie with a, you said 20 hour brisket? Ooh. 20 hour smoked brisket. I can get to that in a minute if y'all want. Buddy. Like, I'm not, I, I like shepherd's pie. And typically you think of shepherd's pie with that like ground beef. Cole might have ruined my shepherd's pie game forever based on Saturday night. It was glorious. And then he made a hot Ghirardelli brownie with the ice cream on top. Mm. It was like it. it was solid. It was, it was a good. twenty hour smoked brisket on the pellet grill. Don't tell me you can't get smoke flavor on a pellet grill because you put that thing at two hundred degrees for twenty hours. Yes, you can. Let me tell you, slice into that bad boy. It was the most tender, juiciest brisket I've ever had in my life. Incredible flavor. We had our uh, church small group had a. Welsh family in town. I just, you, it was a German. His wife's German, and he's from Wales. He said, Sonny, that's the best brisket I've ever had. I'm telling you, 
Big, big approval. He said, compliments to the chef, mate. Just big. <laughs> but you know, didn't you? Guy. I love yep. the Welsh I love the Welsh accent. It's yeah, nice. it went from old man to Welsh. Australian. <laughs> A little Australian there at the end. Multiple <laughs> folks in the group said that it was a solid brisket. Um, so I, I was proud of that one. I was proud of that brisket. And then I put a little, made a little red wine reduction in it on uh, Saturday. Put some vegetables on top and mashed up some garlic whipped potatoes. <laughs> a little Parmesan cheese on top mm. of that. It was, it was solid. I appreciate that, Mitch. Thank you. Wow. It was good. I'll good. tell you what. I hate English peas. Do you all like English peas? No, I'm not a big fan. Hate I don't em. like them. Hate them. They were in the shepherd's pie, and they were good. Wow! Because the flavor of the brisket and the garlic mashed potatoes overpowered. Mm. It was amazing. So, so what would you rate it, Mitch? Out of ten? Yeah. It's it's in the it's a it's north of eight and a half. It's probably eight point eight, eight point wow. nine. You can't. For I mean, it, that's good. You, yeah. you can't. Wow, you can't you. give someone a ten. I mean, like you can't. Yeah. It wasn't worthy of a ten. I give you that. I, I was a fan of the red wine reduction. I'll tell you this, if I ate it, see, I'm not, I'm not a big shepherd's pie guy. I don't, I'm not a big vegetables. That's why I have my strong greens. Shout out Bear performance, uh, nutrition, um, sponsors, uh, sponsors. Yes. Uh, shameless plug. Uh, but you know, I'm not a big, I'm not a big vegetable guy. So Cole, if you would, if you'd ever make it for me, just, you know, I will pick out the vegetables. So you don't even have to worry about putting them in there. I sincerely thought about doing that, and obviously I wasn't going to do it in front of Cole. How I was going to do it, I don't know, but like that's like a slap in the face. So that's like you know, Cole, I that's thought like for if, a second. Mitch and I had a mini of potato burger loaf in college. That was like a once a week staple, mm-hmm. super easy. And now I remember, super I cheap. for some reason thought you we put vegetables in it, but you're right, we did. No, which veggies, is the difference? Green beans on the side. Which that's the, the difference. difference the way, shepherd's pie. Yep, and mm-hmm. potato burger loaf. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Except for they put ch- like sliced cheese on top of potato burger loaf. Not a fan. Yeah, not a slap fan. In the face. I don't do cheese on potato burger loaf. Well, which is what makes it shepherd's pie. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is true. It was not. You put a little parm on it, and that was it. So just a little, bit, just enough to get a crust on them taters. Yeah, this week's well, going to be fun though. We've got a uh, friendsgiving coming up. I, I totally mm-hmm. like. Honestly, my mind is on ducks. We have. Some more food to cook, some more food to eat. This is going to be a great weekend, Dad Gummit. It's going to be I'm a good about weekend. The appetizer of pizza rolls. Home, oh, we all just rolls. went dead silent. <laughs> Jared's face, he said pizza rolls. Dude, <laughs> all right. I started making these homemade pizza rolls over the weekend. Mitch didn't try any of these. I made them specifically before he got to our house. I was about to say, didn't try them. There wasn't any there for me to try. No, well, Lindsay like wharfed them down. I did too. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I made them for her. They're made out of out of fresh wontons, and you put a little cheese pepperoni. I got some fresh red sauce, dude. I'm never buying a pizza roll ever again. They were <laughs> solid. Mm. I think I'll make them for you guys. Well, I can't wait. Mm. Well, boys, speaking of uh, you know, high class, just pristine food. <laughs> there's nothing much fancier. Then going to the pantry and pulling out a good old box of Pop Tarts. You ain't lying. Slapping that boy, maybe in a toaster. Maybe uh, maybe we can have that talk. To, is a, is a to, is a Pop Tart meant to go in a toaster or is it is it supposed to be eaten kind of cold right out of the box? Thoughts before we get into this. I Mitch? think. Go ahead, Mitch. Yes. I have a strong opinion on this. No, so I'll go last. I think it can go either way. Either? I, I'm, either way? In, okay. I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent. Okay. okay. Truly. AB, I think you got a strong opinion. I do. Well, okay. Scenario. You're, you know, running a little late trying to get out of the house for work. You don't have time. That's whenever a pop tart, you know what? Don't worry about putting it in a toaster because a, a good pop tart is good anyways. It's just a nice snack on the way to work, wherever you're going in the morning or just in between, in a, you know, as a night snack. If you have time though, you know, if you toast a nice little pop tart, I mean, it's hard to beat. It really is. Wrong. No. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Says the, Wrong. Says the man who's not here to argue. <laughs> let me tell you. Let, let me tell hey, you. I forgot, we, I forgot we had Gordon Ramsay on the dang show. <laughs> Cole, remember, I was really thinking about. For, I was really thinking listeners. about. <laughs> for all our listeners, remember how Cole said, AB, you just respect my food opinion. 
Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I was going in. I was going into Saturday open minded. You best believe. I will be the. I'll be your harshest critic. Oh, Ab. Yeah. Cole, if there's a grain of salt misplaced on a piece of food this weekend, you're yeah. never yeah. going to hear the end of it. He won't notice it. He he doesn't. His food. His food skills are like. <laughs> down here. I'm telling you, he, he won't know. He won't. Don't insult the man's palate. I will say, no, he knows what to order at a restaurant, though. I give him props. He and I were like 90% in sync over the weekend, last weekend, of what to get. Except Thank for, you, I, would, I'm, I do need to give you an apology. You told me to get the ACP Friday, and I did not trust you. I did not listen you to didn't. you, and I did not get the ACP. You didn't. didn't realize out of five people sitting at that table, I was the only one to not get the ACP. What the heck is the ACP? <laughs> it's, just, it's what we got at uh, Old Mexico, Mitch. Oh, 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 just say chicken and rice. <laughs> yes. no, 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 Mitch. ACP. Well, well I will say ACP. this. If you heard my order, it was I told him Oros con pollo, and everybody else said, "Can I get the number 89? <laughs> no, I said ACP. Like, give me the ACP. That's fair. And, and then Cole said, said, "I said, give me 89." He said, "Can you give me that ACP?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah you, you know, know me." me. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, anyways, why, why is they be wrong? You can spare another two minutes to toast your uh, your uh, pop tart. Pop-tart. That's what they're designed for. They're designed for the toaster. They're hot garbage right out the wrapper. Now, I will say, if you're running late, the design of a fast, easy dessert or breakfast item, pop it in the microwave. You have 10 seconds to spare. You can pop it in the microwave and warm did it up I, for did, 10 seconds. Did, did I not say? Did it? Wait, I'm confused. I think you said that. You and AB are on the same team. Michael. You said, said the same microwave? thing. Yes. He said the same thing as you. He said he did up it better. Did you say I, said, I, I, said, I, said, I, I said that if you have a chance to heat up a Pop Tart and toast it, right. it is better. Right. But it's, you oh, said right. it's still okay to eat cold. They're not Absolutely, I did. You just no, said not. that too. No, no, I said if you don't have time, put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. So Cole's on the same side. He's just saying that it's not okay to eat cold. Okay. You have at least 10 seconds. Put it in the microwave. Don't ever eat a Pop-Tart cold. Yeah. Hey, listen, That's what it is. as I always say, people have their own opinions, and I respect their opinions even though that I know that they're wrong. Yeah, so, AB, I hear you, and I respect you, and I am open-minded to your opinion. You're wrong. Hey, Cole, don't be open-minded. Be close-minded. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this Mount Rushmore top four pop tarts of all time. Um, let, let's go ahead and start with Cole because he's already mm-hmm. made mention to me before we started tonight that he's not really a big pop tart guy, and so he only has like really. One, that's funny, I, Jared. I think. That's funny. I felt like that was a pretty strong <laughs> argument that he just had. <laughs> I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I'll let him speak, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll allow him to uh, take the floor for us here. Fellas, you give me a Pop-Tart, I think of one flavor and one flavor only. It's the blandest looking Pop-Tart of all colors. Of all, variations of, a, of all Pop-Tart, it's the blandest looking color Pop-Tart. But it's the best. It's the, the only one. I mean, you got a Mount Rushmore. This is it right here. It's four of these bad boys sitting on the mountain. And that's brown sugar cinnamon. One through four right there. All right. Easy enough. Now, I will say, I know you guys need four. Um, I've got to go to a list to pull it up. I mean, I'm just telling you. Um, number four, obviously, is going to be cookies and cream. I, I do remember eating that one a lot as a kid. Um, that was a solid one. Wild berry, just, I can taste, I can smell that one from my childhood right there. My sister, Julianne, used to kill a wild berry pop tart, but she leave the, the crust all over everywhere. It was such a mess. We used to always get onto her for being such a mess. Um, of course, everybody loves blueberry, but I'm not going to go blueberry. I'm going to change things up. There's one seasonal pop tart that's without a doubt probably it it'll compete to brown sugar cinnamon, but um, 
It's only you're, found this time. You're here. reading this straight off a screen. <laughs> I can see your eyes. <laughs> there's only one though. I do remember those two, and I ate them often. But there's one that I'm gonna give a shout out. Pumpkin pie pop tart. Get the crap out of here with that what? bull crap. <laughs> Give it to me. That's like that's uh, like the basic white girl of pop tarts. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Sugar seven though, unanimous number one. Pumpkin okay. spice latte. All right. So brown sugar cinnamon is, yeah, is was a staple, and then hear, hear me out though. What if this weekend coming up, I I genuinely want to try one of these uh, pumpkin pie pop tarts. Let's just Never do it. Tried one and is your number two on your list? I like pumpkin pie. I guarantee it'd be, it'd be a good number two. <laughs> you haven't even tried it. I know it'd be good. Hey, just... speaking of trying things this weekend, you know what we do, we do, we do real oh, quick? Man. This is off topic, but we do need to have the Chick fil A versus Burger King milkshake challenge between me and Jared. Oh, yeah. We did. Oh, yeah. yeah that'd we be a good one. We're going we're gonna to do that. More to come. We'll make so, it happen. I know that was. I, I'll go second because I am okay. also. I can't tell you the last time I had a pop tart. I do wow. like them. Like I'll I'll eat them. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. So my number four was the chocolate fudge. I okay. used to like those a lot, especially the pop tart bites. Have you ever had those? Yes, the mini the mini mm-hmm. ones. Oh yeah, those are. As dangerous. the doctors told me, Mitch, a little too rich for my blood, but I respect it. <laughs> That's fair. Like chocolatey <laughs> rich or like like mon- yeah. <laughs> Shout There's out. no such thing as too Shout chocolatey out. rich for AP. That's that's also true. Shout out to Ted Lasso. My number three, what? sorry, AB and Cole. I don't know how Jared is, but my number three is brown sugar cinnamon. Um, it's not my number one. Just because I've never I've never really had it a lot. I know it's good. Like I know it's good. But number two for me is Wildberry. I love me a good Wildberry. Um and number one is your classic blueberry. I, that's what I ate the most of as a kid. Um, it just holds a special place in my heart. I will say my dad, big unfrosted strawberry. Mm. So mm, just, just that, a menace. Bold, bold move. Shannon, a menace. he's gone down in my book on that one. You got to have some frost. <laughs> Golly. Dad, dad, you're still my favorite, but Shannon, I don't respect your pop tart. <laughs> that's a cry for help eating a uh, unfrosted <laughs> pop tart. My dad, uh, fun, fun, fun story. My dad used to get unfrosted pop tarts when we would go to hunting, so that I wouldn't eat them. Uh, he's also <laughs> a big unfrosted. That's a yeah. great dad move. Playing chess over there, not yeah. checkers. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Wow. I was like four years old. How am I supposed to go get pop tarts? Shout out, Dad. Well, yeah. AB, you want to? You want to? You want me to go next so you can round round us out, or how you feeling? Um, I don't know if he can hear me. I feel like AB would just—he's a passionate man, and I'm ready to hear his argument last because I'm gonna just okay. lay into him. Just All right, kidding. I hear you. I hear you, AB. I don't know if you're with us, but I'm gonna go, and then you can you can uh, wrap us up, okay? Um. So number four for me is this was a big college thing for me. So um, back in the day uh, when I, when I played some football at college, I went to class, went to workouts, went to practice and then came to the dorm. And this was always my midnight snack in college. And that was the cookies and cream pop tart. Mm. For whatever reason, the cookies and cream, it was like a dessert more than it is like a, a bre- breakfast Pop-Tart for me. So that was a late night Pop-Tart, um, the cookies and cream. Number three is the classic blueberry. Blueberry always um, was strong for me. Not my absolute favorite, but a, a good one and a staple. Um, number two is not the unfrosted, but the frosted strawberry. Um, the frosted strawberry is a strong number two. And number one, I feel like this is kind of like cereal for me. There's not even a close second. This one reigns supreme and is above all of the others. And that is the brown sugar cinnamon. Brown sugar cinnamon takes number one spot for me. It is the best Pop-Tart by far. AB, thoughts? I, there's, there's, no, uh, 
there's nothing that's too horrid, you know, coming from your list for me. I would eat every single one of those pop tarts. All right. Well, let's hear what you got. You're like the, um, the master pop tart guy here, so. Well, guys, when I think of pop tarts, number one thing that comes to my mind is nostalgia. I mean, you can't you can't just eat a pop tart and not think to the good old days when you're young and just chowing down on a good pop tart. And so here's my list. And surprisingly, I think me and Cole may be singing a little kumbaya here. Uh -oh. So number four, wild berry pop tart. Cole, I'm I'm with you right there. Wild berry pop tart is just a it's just a solid flavor. Um, I remember it just number one, the design on it always, you know, just yep. made my mouth water. It just looked really good. Uh, number four, wild berry pop tart. Number the two. Design, or, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. Just, I'm sorry. I was going to say the design reminds me of those old cafeteria cups. It does. Yeah, it really yeah. does. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. I digress. Uh, with number three, cookies and cream pop tart. I mean, just a solid pop tart. Just to sell it. Now you get get a cup of water right next to you. Get it ready to go because it's gonna make you thirsty. Um, but give me cookies and cream at number three. Number two, give me s'mores. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. S'mores pop tarts. Yeah, that's a good one. Just a solid flavor of pop tart. You can never go wrong. Uh, it's giving you two flavors in one. It's just a solid, solid pop tart. And of course, number one, you got to go with brown sugar cinnamon. Just trumps all others. The best pop tart on the market, hands down. Mm. I like it, boys. I Any, couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree more with your with your list, AB. I, I'll give you that. You. You've game recognized game. I respect you, and I apologize for assuming that I was going to dog you for your list. Hey, it's okay. Please forgive me. Yeah, I do. Please forgive me, Grace. Boys, uh, any honorable mentions that you had that maybe not have been weren't mentioned? I was going to say s'mores was my honorable mention. So yeah, yeah cookies uh, and cream my is list. Mine, so what? Can y'all be a little bit on this list? Strawberry unfrosted made number nine. I can't even believe it made the list. That's and, unbelievable. Wow. Evidently, I'm, there's a there's a red velvet. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, I I could I could try that. Yeah. And Honestly, I, I don't really the, have raspberry. I don't. I don't know if I have an honorable mention because I'm very picky on my selection of pop tarts. Yeah, there's like um, three that I eat, and that's like. Honestly, I'm I'm one of those guys that if I open a pantry and it's a pop tart that I don't eat, I just won't have it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm just I remember, pass. Did, didn't they come out with like pop tart like milkshake versions of the pop tarts? They did. Yeah, I, just, I remember I that. See. Yeah. I, I think if I remember correctly, I was not a big fan of any of the milkshake ones that I tried. I don't remember what oh. like what types they came out with, but I, I remember a, thinking like being so excited for it and being really let down. Cool. I have a dirty yeah. confession. Uh oh, uh oh. I actually yeah. liked the strawberry milkshake ones. Do you? That's I okay. did. Yeah, I, I see really the potential did. in them. I'm, I'm a big strawberry milkshake guy, guy though. Yeah. I I do like a strawberry ice cream low key is actually pretty good. As long as it doesn't have chunks of strawberry in it. Agreed. Okay. Give me Shout the unhealthy out. stuff. The outshine. <laughs> What'd you say, Abby? I said give me the unhealthy stuff. Oh, no, not the said, chunks of ice cream. No, 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 no. You, you said before, before that. that. Before before that. that. The, a, the A word that you said. Yeah, I agree. Said a -word? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that. Who'd have thought? Who thought? We Not went from either. agreeing to heartedly disagreeing to agreeing in the same podcast. <laughs> That's what happens when you follow Jesus. Just, just <laughs> like watching a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to grow shell out though. I just saw a limited edition. No, you grossed inside earlier with that pumpkin pie. Oh no! Watermelon. Don't you dare about my pumpkin pie. Watermelon. Limit, limited edition watermelon pop tarts. <laughs> 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 I can't even. How about how about the loser of our uh, Pick'em Lee has to so, eat a watermelon? Okay, so tart. Mitch has to eat a Pick'em. <laughs> no, no, dude, not after, not after this just week. Call him not out. after this week. You and I are are fighting to see hey, no, how bad we can I be. I was gonna say, that say what? One thing that we should do one year is do the twenty four hours in Waffle House. That would no, be no, awesome. That would be hilarious. Annie has been raised. 
The person to walk away with the least amount of ducks Saturday morning. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's going to get dangerous to because... Has to eat a watermelon and a pumpkin. Uh, no, if somebody eats a no, watermelon, that's, you got to eat dangerous. the pumpkin. That's bad, dude. That Somebody <laughs> could get hurt because I'll get too competitive and it's that won't be good. No, Mitch is going to do his normal yeah, tactic, and he's going to and he's going to shoot right beside our ear, so that we're so that we just go dazed. No, no, so no he always does oh, one. Oh, I, he always oh. does one. AB will shoot a good. <laughs> AB always shoots a good two seconds before Mitch, and he'll come in behind, and that bird's already dropping. He goes, "Oh, I got that one, boys! I got that one." <laughs> That's Mitch. We know hey, it fe- Cole, it fell in his it fell in his arena. Okay, it fell in his his uh, window. I can honestly say I've never I've never heard you guys say that about me. Do I really claim ducks that I that I didn't shoot? It's called yeah, glass shattering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Moment. What's what's the over under of ears busted from Mitch's shooting oh, this weekend? That's I'm different. gonna set it at two and a half. No, two and no, half. because I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. The last time I did that was when was like five years ago and I haven't done it since. And I'm Hey, y'all gonna... watch. We're gonna have, Mitch is there's gonna be ducks flying over and Mitch goes, you know, I'm not shooting. I'm not going to shoot. Not, yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. Not going to do it. Those yeah. are y'all's ducks. They're not mine. <laughs> I'm just going to be taking pictures of y'all. I'll shoot. I'm going to be getting the content tag on it. Somebody's got to do it. Oh, man. Uh, I, I do think that our wives have come up with a content. Yeah, Jared, content I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of this either, to be uh, honest with you. I'm not, I'm not a fan either, but I think it, I think it would be some good content. So you talk I, about you. You talk about, and I'll let you explain in just a second. But let me get this on my chest. You talk about the worst thing that you could ever drink in your life. Okay, <laughs> the rotten thing of this is like there's nothing that is tastes worse, and you're just gonna <laughs> willingly. I just go ahead, Jared. Coming from a man, I know it yet. I'm coming from a man that's it. like dry scooped pre workout. <laughs> AB saying it's the worst taste. This is gonna be terrible. So so Dorian, enough of Dorian, Dorian, y'all no, will Dorian, agree with me. Y'all are Dorian agree. and Rachel think that we should live eat or drink. It's kind of a mixture of both. Uh, kefir. Do you know what kefir is? No, I'm not. Dude, it's I don't a, do that. It's like rotten get milk, our, isn't it? Get our live reaction. I honestly don't even know what it is. No, no, no. It's, 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 like, like, it's fermented milk is what it, I was told. Fermented, fermented milk. milk. Yeah. But it's it, yeah, it's got like yeah, I don't know what all it has in it, but yeah, it's fermented milk and it's it's a Russian drink. It's become thin yogurt. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a yogurt e type vibe. Yeah. No. And you know, you know what I heard it was described to taste like? Imagine that you're sitting in a field of grass <laughs> and a cow takes a dump right beside you. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. <laughs> That's how Dory describes hey, uh, it. So imagine yeah. imagine like, this meal. I'm this. Imagine I'm, I'm, about to just, I'm about to take this thing to the next level. Imagine this meal. You got some kefir milk, and you got a blended up raw ribeye you got to drink. Oh. Or grill. We'll go grill. Montreal steak oh. seasoning blended to a pulp. And so you got to drink both of them. And a pumpkin, a pumpkin pie. Uh, a Pop-tart. pumpkin pop tart to top it off, to finish it off for dessert. Watermelon. Watermelon pop tart. <laughs> one of, listen, one of the things on Google says, why does kefir taste so good? Some people <laughs> grow to love it. I don't know. Some people some acquired some people taste, like, as they would say. Acquired taste. We, I won't call him out, but we had somebody over the other night, and he, he thought it was really good. The idea of like – Yeah. Hey, you never know. I really like my strong greens, and apparently that tastes disgusting. So, The yeah, idea is, why do you have it at your house? What – like – not trying to be funny or anything. Why? Yeah, um, my wife's getting into the big, she wants a dairy cow. So that's coming next. And so she's trying all of these health benefits that come from having a dairy cow, which shout is out to bone broth kefir. So yeah, like apparently yeah, raw milk kefir. Um, you can make a bunch of, bunch of like Doria, stuff out of that. Doria kombucha yeah. girl. No, I don't think she's ever had kombucha. She's been, she even, seems like, like she's very, she seems like yeah. she's like going that way. Like she, yeah, I feel absolutely. like that's the next How thing. How does one acquire Cole, kefir? Cole, let me just—I will say this though: kefir is supposed to be really good for your gut health. Like it's, it's one like of a those big like, health guy. Sure, yeah, maybe so it's I a detox. It's like, yeah, it's supposed to be really good for you. Okay, like, no, it's like the noted. best natural probi- probiotic out there. Wow, better than apple cider vinegar, boys. I'll do it. <laughs> the way my gut is, I'll do it. <laughs> Mitch, I've been trying to get you to take strong greens for forever. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't I want to do acquire that. kefir. What aisle is it in Publix? 
Uh, you can't. You can't you, get you, like it's. This is like a black market deal. If it's been processed, it's not real keeper. So, so it's a black market deal. You can only buy it from. You, you've got like to get moonshine. It from a, local, a local farm. Yeah, it's like moonshine. Where? So I need to walk they... up to my. So they got dairy cows across the road from my house. And walk up to that guy over there. His name's Jared. I say, Jared, I need that keeper, keeper boy. Hook me up with that keeper. You got somebody's that, you got somebody's gonna walk by. And think you, somebody's gonna walk by and think you said reefer. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When Rachel first said it, I like. Rachel, we're not about to take a drug on the podcast. <laughs> Big Keith guy. Uh, Big turn Keith. to the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> it takes the meaning of Chief Keith to the next level. <laughs> well, boys, speaking of uh, controversy and doing things that are controversial, I think we need to get into our Good With It segment. And uh, Evidently, it's a good one. Yeah, the way that this is set up, I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to it hear is. what this is and how this week's going to play out. For my marriage, apparently, I yeah. Think I, know what, so, I think I know what it is. Um, th- like I said, I don't know how how um, now. Hey, you know what? We may get very feisty right now. I just don't know. I, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure if we will or not. Uh, but I have a good with it segment that will bring a lot of um, tension my way. Um, uh, my wife may not talk to me for a couple of days, but I'm flying out tomorrow. So we'll leave it at that. Let's get in, drop the grenade and leave. Yep. So are y'all ready? I think I know what it is, but go. Yeah. Go for it. Do you see this thing right here? Oh, okay, buddy. this is not Stanley what I thought Cup. it was. You see it? <laughs> Here's my good with it, not good with it. Stanley Cups are overrated. Ball dropped. Mic dropped. Good with it, not good with it. Mm. Cole, does Lindsay have one? I guess all y'all want me to go. I guess you set me up for it. Um, <laughs> no, Lindsay does not have one. But because my wife spent a weekend with Rachel. Sure sounds like she's getting now, it for Christmas. We have now put up not one, but two Christmas trees. We put up all the Christmas decorations and my house is full of Christmas decor because of Rachel. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then because of that also, she now has a Stanley cup on her Christmas list <laughs> because Rachel told her how great they are. And I said, so what do they do? She said, uh, they hold water or whatever you want to drink. I said, okay. Um, so why? I, and I, I looked at the price of these things and they're basically like, a Yeti cup's a great value cup compared to a Stanley cup. I'm telling you. They actually, like, break down the price. And I'm like, so I told Rachel, I said, what, what do they do? They hold ice for a long time. Yeah, and evidently, evidently two full days. I'm going to call bull okay. crap on that. Okay, so does a Yeti cup or a uh, right. brand. Like, you can literally buy the great, the Ozark brand at Walmart, and it would hold ice for just as long. I couldn't agree with you more, A.B. I'm good with it, but I still have to buy one for Christmas. I got to buy one for Christmas too, Cole. Another, Another one? one. Oh, oh yeah, we have three. It. We have three. We're working on get, four and five. You got to different get wow. the different colors for the uh, matching. Yeah, got to get different colors. Match the outfits. Got to match the outfits. Got to get the smaller ones in case we don't want to drink the bigger ones because we have coffee in the smaller ones, but then we have water in the bigger ones. So of course, it makes perfect sense. I Mitch, I'll have you like go. Sponsor, I'm all your Mitch, I'll have I, and then Jerry, you could be next. I I don't like the the idea of just like the those cups. I'm just like that's the point. Like what? Like okay, yeah. I I would say they're overhyped. I mean, because of how hyped they are. Uh, something something of that nature that's that expensive that stays that sold out that much. It has to be. It's right. overrated. It, it's it's just it is what it is. I mean, there's there's no two ways about it. And I mean, I, I don't. I think we're all. I think we're all in agreement here. It just is go, it because it has a handle. Is that why? But here's the thing. So does the Yeti. So does Yeti Rumble. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. you call it. And I'm gonna be honest. I've had one of those forever. I like a Yeti without a handle more so than with a handle. Uh, I'm a big Purvis guy. Me too. Purvis is the most underrated cup brand. 
Hey, that they're may be slender. Another. They're slimmer. They hold ice for just as long. And they got some cool styles. I got one. I got one. It's a bird dog on it. That gum it. Hmm. I might so go Mitch, get it right you, now. So, Mitch, are you are you good with it being? Yeah, overrated? no. I, yes, I'm good with it being overrated. I'm all aboard the good with it train. Choo choo. Um, Jared's quiet. I'm concerned. Jared, what what's your take on it? I'm concerned. Is well, Dory? Boys, hey, listen. You might be a little. You might be a little disappointed. Blink, blink twice if Dory's right there looking at you. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's not. She's not here. I mean, she is here, but. <laughs> Um. So here's what I'll say. <laughs> He's not. He's I not would. Wrong. I would never go out and buy a Stanley Cup for myself. I'm not going to do it. Okay. That being said, Dory now has two Stanley Cups. However, what a flex! I, I have found myself using her extra Stanley Cup. You did. When you were I go it. to the gym. You were using it. And it's really. I have a Yeti. And I like my Yeti, and that's what I had been using. The only problem is, the only difference for me is that the Stanley Cup fits perfectly in my cup holder, and my Yeti does not. And so it, a lot of times I set it, like, in the crevice of my seat and the middle dash, and it falls down, and then you're, like, searching for it. So it's annoying in that aspect. Like, whether Stanley Cup makes a better cup, I have no idea. Like, probably not. But it fits in the cup holder, and it's just easier to to get transport back and forth. So I I do use a Stanley Cup from time to time, but in my opinion, they are way overhyped, and I would never mm, actually wow I would never actually purchase one for myself. Jeez. The only reason I have and use one is because there's just one sitting on the counter that no one else is using. So take that for what it's worth. But I I mean I would say if I'm still allowed, even though I use one. I would say I'm good with it. That it is very, very overhyped. Yeah, I think. Does it I come with a straw? Can... I, think I think so. so. I, I I think so. Yeah, yeah. The idea of like drinking out of a straw at a gym is feminine to me, and therefore I don't like it. Sorry, well, I digress. Hey, hey no, no, I, I do get a straw for my cup. Um, big straw guy for the cup. Out of it's all the people in this group, Cole, I would think you would be the one to drink out of the straw. No offense. That's like <laughs> no offense well, he to literally, you we literally have a We literally have a podcast with him sipping out of a straw with his good with it cup. Okay. Well, Jared, that was back in my bearded days when I didn't want water in my beard. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so Jarrett, overrated, and I think you know exactly what I'm going to say. Yes, I believe it's overrated. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a big shaker bottle guy myself. Um, I think it serves multiple facets of, um, you know, it can make you protein. You could just use it as an everyday cup. Um, they're a lot cheaper than Stanley cups. Um, but I'm not going out here buying a bunch of them, you know, different colors for my different outfits. And you know what? I love my wife. And if it makes my wife happy, you better believe I'm going to give her a Stanley cup. If it does not mean to, that I don't think that they're overrated, Stanley Cups are overrated. I'm good with it. All right. That's Singing fair. a little I was, kumbaya. Uh, I was looking at where Stanley was made, and it's made in China. And I was about to say, well, dadgummit, Yeti's made in the USA, and that cup was made in China. So never mind. Ah. Sorry. I was looking for another feather in the cap of the Yeti. But, so yeah. we need to find a cup that's made in America, by God, and get us one. I agree. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, we can become sponsored by whoever that is. He dang right. What kind of drinks? What kind of cups would you call those? Like, what are they? What kind of cups? Tumblers. Like, like a thermos. But I feel like tumbler is like made like isn't that like a Yeti product? I don't know. This is way off base. Oh well. Well, this uh, this will definitely be a good with it segment for the social media because. Uh, this this is definitely one where I don't think there's anyone in the middle. Like there's going to be people who have jumped on that train and jumped on it hard or are, and are all about Stanley. And then I think that there are, oh, what are the odds? Turvis made in America. Yes. I think we know, I think we know we're back. Um, and then I think there's going to be those people, you know, who have watched all of these other people buy Stanleys left and right. And they're sick of it. So yep. um, I think there's going to be a, a good little divide yep. here. The, listen, the past few uh, weeks, I've not done a graphic. I've just done the um, poll. 
Uh, this week there will be a graphic because oh, yes. we 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 got it. We got to let the people know that we are good with it being overrated. We may receive some backlash, but bring it on. We're ready. I feel like the male audience will will say good with it. Our female audience yeah. will say not good. Here's with the it. thing: we're we're we've been oppressed to say that Stanley Cups are the best thing in the world. Mm-hmm. They're not. Yeah. Okay. We have Men, a, we have a stand voice. up. We have a voice. We have a voice. Damn, it. Rise up. Hey, Take a breath now. You're alive. What a song. Good grief. What a song. You know, who, you know who has a voice too? The people of Jerusalem. Nehemiah. How'd y'all like that? That was smooth, was that not? Yeah, that Ooh, was a that transition. Was, that Tell was me more, a man. transition. Tell me more. Gentlemen, we had a we had a a task. Uh as most of our listeners know, we have been going through Nehemiah. We are on chapter twelve this week. We have one more chapter after this. Um I feel weird. I feel like Jarrett typically leads this off, um, but I just took the reins, and we're here now. I like and it. I don't, I'm I don't know what to do with my hands. Right. I'm here. That's right. Yeah. So, boys, what y'all think about Nehemiah chapter twelve? I think we should let Jarrett go because Jarrett. Right. J- hey, uh, do I'll, it. I feel like I always over over talk in this segment, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short. I thought was, you, if there's an AB, you are the ordained minister. You and AB, so well, one of, well, I'm one uh, of them. Yeah, one of them. Take preachers, range. preachers you versus take. woodsmen. I still think that's a good. <laughs> if, um, if there's name, but if there's ever a section to over talk on, this is it. Yeah, yeah sure. I agree. Um, yeah, I think one of the, one of the thoughts that I had while I was reading this was that I feel like it's a great. We stumbled upon this in a great week. Um, that the week that's leading up to Thanksgiving, um, I felt like this was a, a very proper chapter. We didn't necessarily plan that out, but, um, it was, it was really, really good. So, um, one of the verses that really stood out to me was Nehemiah 12, um, verse 27. And it said at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with gladness, with thanksgivings, and with singing, with cymbals, harps, and lyres. And the sons of the singers gathered together from the district surrounding Jerusalem and from the uh, villages of the Nef- Na- Neto Fathites. Well done. Nice. I don't know. That, well that, done. That, that no, is that not, that's that, be is, right. uh, that is not the word I actually thought it was. But when I went to go read it, <laughs> it was coming together. So um, <laughs> yeah. That- but uh, so, so yeah, I just think, um, you know, short and sweet that I would say that, you know, as men, God's created us to strive and to go after and to get. Um, and a lot of times that makes us competitors. And usually what that means is that uh, we have good eyes for what we are missing out on and what we're lacking and what we don't have. Um, and this was just a good reminder of, you know, as um, as Nehemiah have, has led the people of God to build this wall um, before they before they kind of embark on anything else, they're thanking God for what they have. And so um, I would just say as as men of God, you know, it's important to, um, of course, strive and to go after and, and never settle and, and all of those things. But to also take time to look back and see how far that you've come through the power of the Holy spirit and through God's working in your life. Um, and to be thankful for all of those things that he's blessed you with. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Maybe one thing I noticed too, in this chapter is they're acknowledging the people that have helped build the wall and continue to structure this. Um, but really what they're doing, they're, they're honoring, the leaders, they're honoring the people that are involved, um, that are kind of taking the vocational stance and in, in spiritual walk. Um, so, I mean, I guess in today that would look at just how do we pray for our spiritual leaders that we have our, our, the pre our preacher or the, the folks that work behind the scenes in our church, the volunteers, um, staff members of our church and people that were plugged into with friends. Um, you know, we have to constantly just pray for them and just continue to love on support them, make them feel encouraged because I mean, you know, as Jarrett, I mean, he's a, a full-time minister and that's something that we, we take lightly and something that, that we, you know, need to show that, that he is valued and supported and all that he does. Cause I mean, 
folks like this, they're carrying the torch. They are um, the catalyst really for, for a growing faith and community. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And I'll, I'll go next here. Uh, one of the things that I've kind of harped on is just the worship that is happening. Um, the people have worked hard. They've, you know, they worked hard to build this wall. Now they're dedicating the wall to the Lord. And the thing that we see is just corporate worship. And when I mean corporate, it's, it's everybody all together worshiping the Lord. And I, and again, in one of my commentaries, I read it's, it says, here's a glimpse of God's people doing what we were created to do, worship him. Purification and sacrifices enfold this celebration, showing the need for cleansing and mercy from a holy God. And we know that that cleansing and mercy has come uh, from Christ. It's from his righteousness that he lived here on earth, dying for us, uh, taking on this, our sins, taking on our sins on him, and then raising, uh, rising from the grave, defeating death, so that those who put their faith and their trust in him as Lord and Savior can now be cleansed and be made right uh, through his righteousness. And that's the gospel. And that's why we worship. Is, and, and that is what uh, we were created to do is we're created to worship him. And then it, it kind of goes on and says, the celebration overflows with the joy that God intends and that God enables. And so I think it's important to remember that though worship is something we created to do, it's something that God has intended for us to do, but it's also something that God has enabled us to do. So well, that's what we're supposed to do. That's why whenever we uh, go duck hunting, you know, we go on the golf course, you know, we may not be singing songs all the time, but we are worshiping the creator. We're worshiping the Lord by being good stewards of his uh, created world, being good stewards of the word of, of his word um, and being good stewards to the relationships that are surrounding us, you know, worshiping the Lord in everything that we say, everything that we do. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things that I say at the end of my prayers all the time is, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you, O God, a rock, a rock and our redeemer. And that's, that's my prayer. And that's kind of what God has called us to do. And that's what we see here. Mm. Yeah. I don't really feel like I need to say a thing. Um, but yeah, along the same lines of just rejoicing and giving God the glory at the things that they have done, um, because obviously without God, uh, none of this would have happened. But um, as soon as the wall is finished, they're praising God for that. And I don't know about y'all, but when you do something good, a lot of times it's easy to hype yourself up um, and say, look at what I did. Look at what I did kind of thing. It's a lot. It's easy to have pride. And uh, this is just an example of them not having pride, turn around and rejoicing and giving thanks to God for the blessing that they've been given, the ability to do what they're doing, thanking them for the leaders and just giving God the praise through, through it all. So I like mm -hmm. how we all took something different from it. So it's the beauty of it. Beauty of scripture. Dad gummit. Matt. Well, I guess I, I'm still holding on here. Wait, that, that's it, that's, boys. That's, I mean, that's your role. That, if you're going to take the last that, segment, then you've got to end the out. So, um, yeah, that's all folks. Right, right at an hour. Just, just perfect. Um, let's go have us a week. Um, 14 episodes in 15th is going to be coming with some duck stories. I would assume with some good food and more okay. good stories in chapter 14 of Nehemiah. Thanks. Yeah. Weeks next week. It's just, I'm fired up. 13 rocking and rolling. Hey, best, be sure to like and subscribe right here. Listen, fa uh, good with it. Faithful. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, rate us on any of your podcast listenings. Go watch our YouTube channel. You get to see us face-to-face -face on video. Um, if you're not already, join our Patreon. You get to have access, early access to our podcast and an after-hour session along with other uh, great uh, things to come, especially this Christmas. So make sure that you are a patron with us. Uh, you can find that on our Instagram page. Uh, you can also find that in the description, I'm sure. And then also, if you have something that you want to tell us, if you have a Goodwood segment, just email us, goodwithitpod at gmail.com. Amen. All right, boys. That's it.
We'll see y'all later. Have a week. Quite quite.